guys, so I'm back doing another game video, and I already tried doing this once, but I wasn't recording video, just audio, so that was lots of fun, uh, but anyways, so I think, let's see, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start by just doing this level, um, but yeah, so Spyro today. This is the PS4 version. Um, not the original, but, um, but yeah, so should be fun. Um, but yeah, um, I've been playing Spyro since, like, the original games were out. In, like, I think, I think they were out in, like, the early 2K decade, because they followed, like, directly after Crash, which came out in, like, the late 90s. So, but anyway, so, yeah, let's see, um, I turned down, like, the effects volume, too, so hopefully you shouldn't be hearing that too much, and also my heat just turned on, so you probably can't even hear the music, but when the heat turns off, you'll hear it, so, um, and the first time I tried to film this, I turned my heat off all the way. <laughs> but I'm not doing that again, because I ended up freezing. Um, and it wasn't all for nothing, so... <laughs> but I'm hoping that this time, I'm doing everything right. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's the first new 
so hard, um, which I think is a good thing because it's good for people who like grew up playing the original Crash games and it's at a point where like if you go back and play them, you know, you already know how to do them so they're really easy. So it's fun to have a new game in the old style because it's like you're playing, you know, new levels all over again. Um, and it is in the old style of the original games because after the first original four Crash Bandicoot games, which includes the original trilogy, and the first PlayStation 2 game, which was The Wrath of Cortex. Those ones were all in that format of like, you had home worlds and then you had like levels that you went to. Um, and then after that Wrath of Cortex PS2 game, they completely just like destroyed the format. Um, and Crash Twin Sanity, I think, was the first game that just had a completely different format altogether. Um, and, I mean, I still really liked that game, like, because I played that game, like, when it came out a long time ago. I remember that being, like, a game that I was really excited about for a long time, like, when I was a kid. Um, I think that came out oof, probably around, like, 2005 or so. And, yeah, they can really change the format. It was almost more like open world in a way um not quite open world but like it was more open world than crash and spyro games had been like um before because they also completely changed the spyro format um as well which i haven't played so there was also like the original spyro trilogy as well which is like pretty parallel to the crash thing and then <clears throat> there was the first ps2 game which is also the fourth in the series called Enter the Dragonfly. And I honestly don't remember that game enough to be able to like compare that. And I don't know if that's in the old format of these Spyro games or if it's in like the later format, I'm not sure. But what I can say is that by the next game in the series, which came after that, um, it definitely was, which was a hero's tale. That one was completely different and had like new characters and stuff. Um, and I remember that game being, like, where, um, I kind of fell off with the Spyro series. I, like I said, played the Crash series all the way through to, like, the newest games, but, um, I definitely lost interest when it got to the last two, which were the ones that I said I did on the Wii, which was, um, I can't remember what the first one was called, but the second one's called Mind Over Mutant, so, um, I really can't remember what the first one was called, though. Um, uh, but yeah, so those two were, like, so weird, and just, like, those were the first two Crash games that I, like, ever actually didn't ever complete, um, at all. So, oh my gosh, I'm doing poorly right now. Um, but yeah, so... Anyways, I actually, um, got, like, an old used PS2 so I can get back into a lot of, like, PS2 games and enter the Dragonfly. It's one of the ones that I'm gonna play, because, like, I really don't have any recollection of it at all. So, it's gonna be pretty much new for me, in a sense. Um, so it's gonna be more difficult than just playing through these. Um, but, you know, we'll see how that is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film that because it's on PS2, but I guess I can do old style, just point the camera at the TV if I want to, but I don't know. I just might not end up doing that. We'll see. Um, that might be too much work for what it would be worth, you know, is what I mean, so we'll have to see. But anyways, um, for now, I'm still playing this one. Oh, they got me. Um, I was doing pretty poorly from the start there, though. So, yeah, I think that for this video, I'm just gonna finish the game as much of it as I can within, like, an hour, and then I'm probably gonna cut it off at that point, because my computer probably can't even handle, like, that much footage left for me to edit anyways. Um, but I don't really have to edit it. I just have to, like, align my audio from my mic with it and that's the only editing I have to do so yeah but um but yeah we'll see and so most of these game videos I'll probably end up doing 
minutes to an hour when I did my first take of this. Um, and I actually started doing really poorly at like one of the little mini games. It was the whack-a-mole thing in the crystal level. <laughs> um, if you have played this before, then you would know what I mean. <laughs> that shit sucks. I hate that part. That and the Yeti. I still haven't done the Yeti actually. I have to go back to um, the third homeworld and go back to that level to do. Um, it's called Frozen Heart Alters. And that level has like this like Yeti boxing thing and it's just so annoying. But we'll see. I actually feel like um, the Yeti boxing thing is easier in this trilogy than it was like in the remake. I think it's easier in the remake than it was in the original. Um, because the original one, I like feel like it would take me like 7,000 tries. I feel like at least with this one, it's just like a few tries. But that whack-a-mole one was still hard for me. Like I remember hating that one in the original trilogy and this one. So, but I finished it um, when I was doing that other video. So, oh, well, I guess I never went through this part. I, that didn't drop a gem, though. I feel like, oh, I did go through this part. I didn't do this part. Oh, God. Um, and I th I'm hoping that they are all 
also saying there's going to be a new Spyro game coming out as well from the same studio. And I think that I have high expectations for that now because um, the Crash game was so good. So anyways, um, yeah, that's just like a weird phenomenon that happened um, in those generations of games like post PS2, I guess, when they just like destroyed <laughs> um, these, all these series. And then, you know, outside of that, um, PlayStation moved into being so much less platformer focused and being a lot more shooter and realism focused with all these realistic games and shit. Um, and you know, I always prefer OG PlayStation with like old Crash and Spyro where it was, the focus was on like platformers and like fictional characters, um, you know, like animalian characters that weren't imitating like human forms like modern games do. Um, and you know, modern game, like, and even an example of a game that's both modern and, like, has old generation that did this as well is, like, GTA is a game that I like that, you know, is realistic and directly imitates human life, but, um, but that's, like, I don't know, that's very specific. I'm doing really bad with this. Like, I can never get these last couple ones without getting fucking shot. But anyways, um... So, um, yeah, um, I don't, uh, I'm struggling to remember what I was talking about, but you get the point of what I was saying, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. I'm thinking the new Spyro game is probably going to come out within the next year or so. The Crash game came out super quick because I remember they announced it. Like, and the release date was not that far out, because they, uh, I don't, it was probably like summer when they announced it, um, and it came out in October, so it was like a really quick thing, like, I didn't have to, like, be impatient at all about it, in a sense, like, um, so I'm thinking that means the Spyro game is also going to come out fairly quickly, because they're probably almost already finished with it in production, I'm sure they already began, doing it before they finish the crash game um because they know that's the next step they have to take um which i agree with and i'm glad they're doing that uh, i'm hoping that this is meaning there's a new era of platformer focus on playstation but you know i'm probably never gonna buy another playstation to be honest like i think from here on out the only new consoles I'll ever get as generations come out is Nintendo, because for me, really, Nintendo is my favorite, um, because Nintendo has always remained a focus on the, like, very creative, fictional style of gaming, um, where you're not using video games to imitate real life, you're using them to be creative and, like, create these worlds that don't exist in real life, and I, that's my favorite part about video games, so... I don't know, that's why the realistic video games just are kind of a bore to me. Um, like I said, outside of GTA, GTA is an exception because GTA is just like, has a lot to it. <laughs> um, I like to think of GTA and like The Sims as kind of opposites because I think that you can do in The Sims what you can't do in GTA and vice versa. Like, all the things you can't do in The Sims, you can do in the GTA. Like, kill people. <laughs> And, like drive around and um you know all those kinds of things you do in gta and then the sims is like mostly focused on the stuff you do in the house and buildings and in your job and stuff and gta like you can't go in most buildings um you can go inside like your own houses like as the main characters but most buildings like are just decorations so i just think it's funny that those are like opposites in a way um but yeah, I do remember thinking at one point as a child, like, why can't you kill people in The Sims? That's pretty awful. But, um, but what I mean is, like, Sims killing other Sims, not like you starving your Sims to death or, like, burning their house down or whatever. I just mean, like, Sims murdering other Sims. But obviously that would be, like, a weird boundary cross for the kind of wholesome nature of The Sims. But in the sense, like, it's not that wholesome because you can't fuck people. Like, so, I don't know. That's something you can do in both GTA and The Sims. Because um, you can, like, go to, like, prostitutes in GTA and shit. Um, but yeah, I saw something about how the new GTA game is supposed to have, a, a, like, a female protagonist. And I'm like, it 
said in the thing I was reading that it's the first female protagonist of the whole series, and I was like, what the fuck? How did it take them this long? Like, that's insane. Um, and obviously the video game industry has long been extremely misogynistic and, like, woman exclusive. Um, and, um, and you can tell that even by just, like, Crash and Spyro are both, both like, male characters and most main characters in video games, if not all. <laughs> Um, before, like, the year 2010, were, like, all male, um, and in the original Crash game, it has the very, like, uh, very, like, weird trope of, um, like, a woman needs to be rescued, so this male protagonist rescues her, like, kind of like the princess thing, so, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but that's the good thing about the later Crash games, is you can see the evolution and how they became more and more, um, I don't know, I guess just better about that, because Coco was positive um, female representation, because she's not just a romantic interest of a male character, um, and she provides like her own um, kind of expertise and her own skills, because she's like the computer tech of that series, um, which, like, is needed, really, to combat, like, Cortex in a lot of ways, so, I think, you know, seeing that evolution is good, but it still is, like, kind of, uh, painful to, like, look back at all video games and how much they are, but it, it's, it's reminiscent of me, um, not reminiscent, but, like, it's a similar situation when I watch, like, old film and, like, TV from pre-2010, and it, it's all, like, extremely anti-gay, so I definitely, like, can understand and empathize with, um, you know, social factors being really shitty and changing over time when it comes to entertainment and stuff. So, yeah, pretty bad, but luckily video games are a lot better in the uh, modern age. I think there are a lot of female protagonists now in, like, especially, like, super contemporary games that came out in the last, like, three years or so. Um, because I was reading something, there was on something on Twitter about someone tweeted, like, I think they were tweeting about what I just was talking about with the GTA, the new GTA female lead, and, um, someone who I was following, or maybe it was like a retweet or something, um, said, like, oh, the incels are gonna be mad, and like, they were reposting that news about the female lead in the GTA game. Um, and then there were actual incels, like, that were angry under the comments, saying things like, oh, now there's always diversity picks for everything, and, like, there has to be a woman in every game now, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding? Like, it's just insane how blind these people are to that. Um, incels are really the most dangerous person in, like, our entire culture. Um, and specifically, incels really can only cishet men who, like, s just struggle to find any sort of positive, um, reaction from anything they do with women, um, and so, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, it's weird, um, I think that a lot of it is this misogynistic hatred they have where they wonder why they can't, um, like I said, like, get a positive reaction out of a female from anything they do, but at the same time, they treat women like shit, so it's like, what do you expect? <laughs> like, I don't know, it's weird. Um, maybe if you just treated a woman with respect and dignity, she would be, you know, attracted to you. Because it's not any sort of, there really isn't an actual incentive to sell look. Um, because, you know, the attraction of looks is all very subjective and, and differentiated amongst different um, oh, I forgot that I got more than 100, so she's gonna unlock this door now. But, I'm gonna finish all the levels before I do the boss battle, because that would be fucking weird. But anyways, so, yeah, back to what I was talking about. Ooh, let's do dino ones. Ah, oh, this is the weird, like, cowboy dinosaur level. But yeah, so, incels, I think, are the most dangerous person in society, specifically, like, white supremacist incels, which is the intersection of, like, white, cishet, incel involuntarily celibate men, um, because
because the that mix of white supremacy and misogyny is like and just everything else that comes with it you know homophobia um transphobia like all that sorts of stuff comes with it and um i think that's the most dangerous person in society those are the people who are constantly shooting up fucking schools and movie theaters and malls and events and concerts and games and like they're the ones setting up all these weird fucking bombs um they are the most common terrorists and i don't know why that doesn't get talked about enough because there's all this stigma about terrorism that terrorists are all these enemies of the state because the terrorist is just the word that the oppressive uh, excuse me it's the word that oppressive governments just use to label anyone who has like <laughs> dissenting ideas um so for example the u.s goes and meddles everywhere in the world steals resources from all over parts of the world um you know, engages in coups that replace governments, their legitimate governments, however they do that in their own systems. The U.S. replaces that with who they want so that they can continue to steal resources unaccounted for. Um, and so anyways, of course, you're going to have resistance that grows from that, and then the U.S. will just call those that resistance either terrorists or gangs. Um, those are the two words that the U.S. uses for its enemies. And so the U.S. has created all these enemies out of people in Western Asia, Latin America, here in the U.S. itself, um, you know, other parts of Africa and, you know, South, Southern Asia, Southeastern Asia, all those sorts of places. And um, really just the global South in general. Is a, is a big part of it and so the u.s goes in and steals all these resources and stuff so anyways that's all to say so much of discussions around terrorism are focused on that and you know other cultures of people or immigrant cultures or whatever um and people don't realize that the worst most dangerous immigrant culture is the fucking white people from europe um and so yeah anyways all that's to say um, I don't remember. <laughs> I was talking about incels and, you know, them being dangerous, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I don't know how I'm even getting off on this topic. Oh, because I was talking about, like, GTA. Oh, and yeah, and, like, the fact that the video game industry is extremely misogynistic. So now I remember where I got to that. Um, but yeah, so, um, that's just how, how it's been, you know, in the world. So, um, but yeah, that is really what it comes down to, is that the biggest terrorist population on Earth, um, are, like, European white supremacists, wherever they are in the world, European descendant. Um, and yeah, they cause the most violence in, like, the whole world, and they always find scapegoats to blame it on. Um, and that's just part of the white supremacist cycle, that's where... The anti-Semitism comes into play with Hitler um, in, you know, the last century. Um, it's, it's all connected. It's all related to that, so. <sighs> but, yeah. Also, I think another thing that influences incel culture is the fact that these white boys, these straight white boys, have always gotten everything, so therefore they feel so entitled. They feel entitled to the, to the body of any woman that they want, and they don't realize that, like, in order to have a woman lay down with you, you must charm her. Like, they miss that step completely, and they think that, like, because they don't, um, because they have no success with the women that it's the women's fault and it's all it's just so weird like I don't understand that and the reason why I said that like you have to be like a straight cishet male to be a, an incel is because like other people who don't get sex don't behave that way like gay people who don't have sex 
and it's not necessarily because they like want to not have sex. So I guess involuntarily celibate aren't like these disgusting people who like are so abusive and like <laughs> awful. Usually, cause, and I, th I think another thing that influences that is that it's a lot harder to be like an incel when you're gay, as, especially as a gay man, because you can find sex really easily, um, usually, um, and you can find some other gay man who's desperate enough out there, you know, to fuck you. So maybe that also plays into it, but at the same time, um, gay men just have like, I don't know, they're just not. They don't behave that way. Um, and like, you know, women don't behave that way when they don't get what they want um, as well. So, um, yeah, that's why I was very specific there. Um, but anyways, so, yeah. I don't think that it's possible for me to like do anything without devolving into some type of like social discussion because well, one, I probably just spent too much time on Twitter, and two, um, I don't know, when I was doing, um, I like always said two and then said I don't know, so it made it pointless, but anyways, um, I, um, when I was earlier filming the original take of this, doing a different level, I, I don't remember what I ended up talking about, but I also devolved into some other, like, social issue, um, and I don't know, that's just because when it's always on my mind, um, and so yeah, you're gonna hear a lot of that from me just in general. Whenever I ramble, I will always end up back to social issues, but I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing to keep the, these discussions open and like, especially in the realm of ASMR, like a lot of people, I think, use ASMR like as escapism, which is like, you know, valid and everything, but you can only really use that as like a temporary escapism. Um, and also like you shouldn't be using some escapist force to like avoid actually dealing with social conflict because that's pretty weak, honestly. Um, and you know, like some movement out there could really use your help, you know? Um, so anyways, yeah, that's why I like to keep, well, I mean, it's not even necessarily a super conscious choice, but, um, the reason why I'm not gonna, you know, edit out me rambling about this stuff or anything is because I do, um, believe in having these discussions, as I'm saying. So, yeah, as uncomfortable as they may be, we gotta keep talking about it, because, um, leaving it to, like, repress and ruminate is not good. Um, so, yeah always gonna be open about that so if that's something that bothers you and if you know if ASMR is a means that you really do want to use as escapism from specifically thinking about social and political issues and stuff then maybe you need to go to a more vanilla channel <laughs> than this uh, but yeah so anyways for I mean, at least it'll be a weed out and I'll just have my little lefty communist um, friends <laughs> joining me with, on this channel. So that'll be good. <laughs> Oh, it shows all of them. Um, but yeah, 
as you can see, like you can check them off as you go. Um, but I don't think it factors into the percentage of completion. I don't think it'll like make your percentage go up of the game. Uh, but yeah, so I need to go back to the, like the end so that I can do the tasks I need to. Oh, I haven't unlocked like the monkey character yet, so I can't do the, um, there's like, uh, yeah, you see it up there. There's like a portion where you have to play as that monkey guy. But I have to do his original level first to unlock it. So I'll have to come back for that one. Um, but there is the, where is it? Is it this way? Ugh, what? I don't remember. Oh, it's up this ladder. I'm an idiot. Um, there's this water thing that I gotta do.
like one of those like spitball things to get rid of that. Um, you'll see what I mean if you don't know. But I keep kind of saying things as if you like um, already like understand this game as well as I do. So I don't know how well you actually do know it, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, that annoys me that you can't like charge into them without them hitting you first. It's so annoying. All right, let's move on. Why did he not eat that? This part annoys me. It makes no sense anyways. Like where are these rocks even coming from? <laughs> oh my god.
wonderful. Nailed it. strategy I think I'm gonna try to approach it that like bar on the edge with a left instead maybe that'll work all right <laughs> no it still doesn't let you twist I don't get that that makes no sense
able to slow me down. Okay, I didn't know that I could do that. Well, there we go. Um, nice. Alrighty. And then I think that might be the last thing that I can do. Um, in this level. Well, no, 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 I forgot. I can do this part too. And then I think this is how I'll wrap it up. Oh, I did not listen to what he said. I think the answer is 12 years now, just from memory. Yep. <laughs> Oops. Okay, let's go. I think that's gonna be 